Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show, where the health, happiness, and mindset of a business owner are equally important to how you run a business. Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show. My name is Allison Turner. Today we are talking health. And today I have with me Elisa Ehrman of Universal Coaching Services. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about New Year's resolutions and how I'm starting now that we're in December of 2022, in case you're watching this replay after the new year. We're, I'm starting to hear of people doing fitness challenges or health challenges come January 1st. And you know, I looked up the statistic and 80% of New Year's resolutions fail by February. So you start in January 1st, you know, you join the gym, you change your diet, you, you know, start running outside, whatever you want to do. And then all of a sudden, you know, it lasts maybe three, four weeks, five weeks, and then you kind of go into this downward trend and go back to your older, old habits. And Elisa and I were talking about this off camera and how, you know, for, first of all, why people, you know, wait until New Year's to make that change. You know, I mean, we're in December now, so you could start it now. But I know the excuse would be, well, the holidays are coming. And I don't, you know, I don't want to miss out on the festivities. Or, you know, why didn't you start it in August? Or, you know, it doesn't have to be January 1st. And sometimes I find that that maybe sets people up, too, because it's more of a marketing because you see everyone else doing it because it's that marketing ploy. And since I'm in marketing, I can speak to that. You know, you're starting to see the gyms like get in on the health challenge come January 1st, you know, lose, you know, how much ever, you know, whatever percentage of weight, body weight, um, you know, get in on the health challenge for eating. And I mean, even one of our um, Jack and my mastermind that we're in, one of the people that's kind of heading the mastermind, he was talking about that this week on one of our calls about how he's doing this new way of eating. And he's starting now, so he is doing that. But come January 1st, he had asked the mastermind if anyone wanted to do a challenge with him until I think April 18th. And there's a reason behind that date. But, um, you know, until April, mid-April, to see like the highest percentage of body weight loss. So, you're starting to see that a lot. So Elisa, I know when we were talking off camera, you know, you said, you know, New Year's resolutions are great to some degree, but it's really, you have to figure out what the why is behind your reasoning to do something. So introduce yourself, you know, briefly and, um, you know, what, what, let me know what you think about New Year's resolutions in the, in the, in the world of health. <laughs> Okay. Um, my name is Elisa Ehrman. I'm a registered nurse, certified diabetes educator, certified health and wellness coach. And um, I own Universal Coaching Services. I provide health and wellness coaching for individuals and do a lot of public speaking at communities and all different types of events as well. So thanks for having me, Allison. Appreciate it. It's always fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. I know you're one of the, yeah. the health experts I've chosen to kind of do a show every once in a while here. Yeah, and thank you for that. I really do appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, so when it comes to New Year's resolutions, I mean, the reality is it's what Allison said. Most people end up failing. And the reason, the research shows that the reason is because they don't have a motivator that's strong enough to keep them going. So a lot of the times people will want to do a health challenge on starting January 1st, possibly to help them maybe look better, they want to lose weight, that's their goal. They want to fit into a certain size pants. And those are all really great reasons to do a health challenge, but the reality is, is it's not strong enough. For most people, those reasons aren't strong enough unless they're tied to something bigger. So that something bigger needs to be outside of yourself. Again, this is all what the research shows. Outside of yourself would be, for example, I wanna wear a size, whatever it is, or I want to lose weight because, or I want to decrease my risk of diabetes or heart disease or whatever it is because of what? Well, something bigger could be wanting to travel with their spouse or friends or family, wanting to be alive and see and healthy to enjoy their kids, their grandkids, 
wanting to um, do something in their career where they have goals and ambitions and they need a healthy body to be able to do that or a healthier body to be able to do that. It could be, you know, if you think about it, you've seen these people, actually my cousin's one of them, it's great. She, a couple years ago, she took her bike, I can't remember where she started now, but she dipped the tire of her bike with a bunch of other people, this was for a charity, of course, in the ocean on, right, you know, in California, the Pacific Ocean. They drove their bikes, they rode, sorry, they rode their bikes all the way across the United States to, I know, and she, I can't remember how old she was at the time, but uh, I think she was in her late fifties, I think. And it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. And she rode her bike all the way across the United States to uh, the East Coast, of course, the Atlantic Ocean. And this was with a group of people. Now, why she did this, along with other people, was for a charity. And my guess also there's something inside of her or and anyone that does that, they want to show proof to themselves or their family or their friends, hey, they can do this. But I'll tell you, you all know there's many people that do things that they wouldn't normally do if there's a charity involved, because again, it's something bigger. So for everyone listening, I'll just encourage you to make sure that your goals for next year involve not just you, but somebody else, whether it's kids, grandkids, families, friends, spouses, career, people you're going to be helping, some way, contribution to the world, something bigger. And that is a great way to be able to be successful. Now, one last thing with that, make sure it's really strong. It has to be something that's close to your heart because if it's not, again, research shows, forget it. The odds are you're not going to do it, be as, as successful. So it's got to be something that when you think about it, it truly matters more to you than like, it's got to be like probably within the top three things that matter in the world to you or within the top five at the most. It's got to be truly that important because otherwise, you know, like Allison said, old habits or temptations or behave, old behaviors, whatever you want to call it, well, it's all the above and more, can come in and try to sway you off your path. So get that motivator clear, make sure it's close to your heart, and then identify what you like to do or what, what the steps are to be able to get there. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You said, um, you know, one of the motivators could be, depending on the person, you know, their children and grandchildren, you know, to be able to live to see like their grandchildren, grandchildren grow up, whatever the cause is. I saw a meme the other day. I actually shared it on my uh, Facebook page that was, you know, parents will kill for their children, but yet they will not take care of themselves from a health standpoint for their children. Correct. And uh, Correct. it just, it kind of hit home when I first saw it. I was like, oh, that's so true because, you know, I know, you know, my father, like who passed away when he was 75, which was still, you know, decent age, but yeah. I know he had some health issues and that stemmed from, I mean, he smoked for many years before he finally stopped. He liked to drink for many years before the doctor finally said, you keep going down this road, you're going to basically kill yourself. And so he stopped, mm -hmm. but it like, it took those pieces for him to actually stop. You know, it wasn't, you know, and I'm sure I know he loved me very much. So it's not like I wasn't a motivator, but it obviously wasn't in his forefront of like, okay, you know, I want to see, be around for my daughter as long as possible. It wasn't there that he, I guess, was thinking. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he wanted to be right. around. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't want to be around, but, no, 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 but no. you know what I mean? It was, um, it's interesting that, yeah, you know, oftentimes we don't, and I'll speak for myself, you know, we leave our own health last versus, you know, someone else, like caring about someone else, someone else may look sick and you like right away, you're like, Hey, are you okay? You know, can I do something? You know, we may be completely exhausted, but yet, the, you know, we're like, Oh, we got to still do this, 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 and this, <laughs> and we got to keep running this schedule and right. not take care of ourselves, especially at entrepreneurs. So since we deal with entrepreneurs on this show, you know, I think it's always important to emphasize that, you know, when you own a business, a lot of times it's all, you know, no holds barred. So especially when you start a business, because there's so many things going on when you first start a business, because you're doing everything a lot of times and you're working long hours and you may be working from home. So, you know, it's not like you just go to the office from nine to five, 
you could get up and just start working, you know, instead of doing something for yourself initially, whether you journal yeah. or meditate or write down gratitude or whatever, um, you know, and I think that's an important piece is you have to make sure you're taking care of yourself in order to take care of others, you know, whether it's others in your company, for sure, you know, if you're the business owner, and you have employees, obviously, you want to remain healthy, not only for yourself, but for the bigger picture of your business, because you're employing people. And whatever your mission of your company is, you know, you're helping, you know, whether it's other businesses, individuals, anything like that. So I think that's another important piece um, to, sure. to think about. But what do you think about, I know one of the things I often hear, um, not just in the New Year's, but often it takes a trend up is, you know, our cleanses. So people are, you know, they come off of Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever holiday they celebrate and, you know, they've eaten not as well, let's just say, because there's more sugar around, you know, you have these delicious mm -hmm. desserts, you have food that maybe you don't eat year round. I mean, I certainly don't eat a lot of the foods at Christmas year round. And mm -hmm. looks like your cat's got an opinion on that. <laughs> like, uh -oh. I, I got it. <laughs> so, you know. He's like, don't give me any more healthy food, mom. It's enough. I like the other yeah. stuff. But yeah, let, let's talk about cleanses. I mean, here's the deal. Um, when it comes to cleanses, just be careful because the truth is, is to really cleanse the body, it takes time. This isn't like a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day <laughs> thing. Now, can you cleanse the body of certain things? Yes. For example, like a candida cleanse, you know, after a few months, you should, if you do a candida cleanse, which is like a yeast type of thing, you know, you can absolutely cleanse a lot of that out of your body. Mm -hmm. But when it just depends what type of cleanse people are looking for, or really not even what type of cleanse, rather what their goals are. Okay. So if someone's looking, and I would say the majority of people look for cleanses to number one, lose weight, number two, have more energy, number three, have more clarity, and number four, to sleep better. If that's the case, then I would just encourage those people to start with just choosing healthier, <laughs> more natural foods, the better limit. Most people are, have issues with gluten, stopping the gluten, see how you feel. Maybe it doesn't make a difference to you. I mean, everyone's different. Limiting the grains in general, doing more paleo. That's a good, it's a really healthy way of eating. And again, let me just throw my disclaimer in. Always check with your doctor before making any lifestyle <laughs> changes. Okay. <laughs> Gotta throw that in there. But then I'm just talking general guidelines here. Right. <laughs> Um, and in e dairy, a lot of people have issues with dairy and the dairy today. I mean, if you're going to do it, I recommend doing the antibiotic free. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course there's sugar and people are eating sugar left and right. Still it's hidden in a lot of healthy foods where there's sugar yep. and just basically removing sugar, gluten, dairy, or if you do dairy antibiotic free, but even still there's issues somewhat with some people's bodies and how they process dairy. But those three things and or grains, which would be more paleo, those three or four things can make a humongous difference in people's lives. And again, I've done this for many years. I've worked with thousands of people and those are great places to start if you're looking for a cleanse. And if that's too much at once, then start with sugar. Right. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, friends. <laughs> and, then, and then look at the caffeine too. I mean, there's different ways to, to look at what you're eating. And that's right. one of the things I specialize in. So you can always work with me. You're like, heck no, she's gonna take away my good food. But, uh, <laughs> but the truth is, is if you want something bad enough, well, if the entrepreneurs are watching, you know what I'm talking about. You want something bad enough, you're going to make it happen. Right. And speaking to what Allison said before, just really briefly, sometimes people do need to have these um, aha moments, right? These aha moments where doctors say, hey, by the way, you have this, mm -hmm. or I need you to do this. Now, sometimes people still don't do anything. Yeah. They get the worst results and they're like, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. Sometimes people are in denial. Sometimes people just minimize things. We're humans. <laughs> so it's, it's be patient with yourself. Give yourself grace. Give others grace, compassion, understanding. Love each other no matter what. And understand that everyone's got their own path. And it's really okay. Right. They get to choose what they want and it's up to them. It doesn't mean they don't love you or care about you. It just means this is where they're at. And maybe they haven't fully connected the dots or maybe they don't want to see the magnitude of the way they're eating and how it really can affect their life. Some people are scared to really look. So just, you know, that those are kind of my suggestions with cleansing. 
really, really high level. I mean, we can go deeper if you'd like, but that's just where I would start. No, I think, I mean, you make a great point and to start with sugar because I think sugar, I think most people, well, I shouldn't even say most people, the, a lot of people I interact with understand that sugar is very addictive. And to me, it's more addictive. Yeah. Well, I've never done drugs, so I can't really speak for, for drugs. Yeah. So, um, but to me, it's like super addictive. I mean, even for me, you know, when I came off of not doing any sugar and now that we're in the holiday time, I do take partake in sugar. Um, you know, I, knowing that I'll probably, you know, go, I'll go back off of it after Christmas and, uh, right. but I can feel my body like craving it. Like, you know, yesterday I was here at the office all day and I was on this webinar that started at 11 AM. We didn't finish till like after eight. And, you know, during that time I was like, I have anything like this. <laughs> <laughs> like just a piece of chocolate, like will suffice for me. Right. And, you know, I usually do dark chocolates. I'm right. not even doing like the Hershey stuff, but I'll do like a 72% dark chocolate, but I didn't have anything in my office. And uh, I was like, darn it. <laughs> I really want just to like a piece of sugar, you know, something that has that taste and the flavor and the, and obviously it's the sugar that's really I'm craving um, because I know it's in my body right now. So when that's the key, it's because it's in your body right. and you kind of got the high from it. So now you're, part of you is looking for it. But I can tell you one thing. Your body's actually not craving it. <laughs> What's craving it is your mind that's convincing you that it's your body because the it's neurotoxic. Yeah. So it's actually toxic to your nervous system and your brain. The body doesn't want it. It really doesn't. It creates inflammation. So yeah. it's actually not the body. But it's, and it's funny because um, I'll just share quickly. I was going through a time a couple months ago where I was having some hypoglycemia out of like nowhere. Hmm. And, and to keep these, I did na all natural suckers, but there's still sugar because I needed the sweetness. So I ate these suckers and I noticed if I had one, I had to have another one. I was like, oh gosh, you know, these are good. And then I would crave them and I would crave them. And it took me saying no more suckers. I Instead, I switched it to dates. So I carried dates with me, dried dates, which is still a lot of sugar. Just I, I did have kind. those yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I used dates. And then I was like, I haven't used the sucker I used. Isn't that funny? I said used. That's see, it's like sugar. It's like a drug. I haven't had sugar that, that I know of in months wow. now. But it's really just saying, no, I'm done. It's like putting your, and then replacing it. Now the dates are there if I need it, but I'm better with that. It's resolved. But bottom line is, yes, I mean, the body doesn't want sugar. The body doesn't want junk. The body wants healthy food because it wants to function best to serve you best. Yeah. But we just have to allow that to happen. Right. And this gets in the way sometimes. <laughs> yes, it does. And I know even in, um, you know, the afternoons, people get that kind of lull in the afternoons. And oftentimes it might be after lunch. And depending on yeah. what they ate for lunch, you know, it's amazing. Like if you have a salad you know, that's relatively healthy and doesn't have a ton of like croutons and stuff on it right, versus right. you have pasta for lunch, which then breaks down to sugar. And, right. you know, um, you know, you ultimately have that crash. And it, I mean, for me, it's, you know, it's interesting because the cleaner I eat, I don't have that in the afternoon. And then like yesterday right. I ordered food in because I was on this webinar all day and, uh, I ordered food from El Camino in Delray and, um, and it was like tacos and some black bean or black beans and rice. And yeah, as soon as I, after I ate that, I was like, okay, I'm ready for a nap. <laughs> you know, I just take yeah. a nap for like 20 minutes and I'll be good. Um, and you know, what's interesting is if you ate that, but just ate less of yeah. it. And that's the other thing. The portion control is so huge. Right. It's not just, I mean, what we eat is a huge factor. That's number one. But then number two is how much of it, because some foods we can do, and if we just do a little bit too much, we just like, I know for me, it could be a healthy food. And then if it's a, like a little bit too much, I'm exhausted because why, why are we exhausted? Because the body has to use energy to digest all that. Hmm. And then if it's something that's not natural, now there's other processes going on that the body's trying to work through while we're trying to focus on our careers, move forward and, you know, be movers and shakers. Right. <laughs> so these things are real. What Alice is talking about. And, um, it really does take effect. And, and you know what? Everyone that's listening knows. I mean, we've all experienced it. And it's just part, again, of being human. And are we listening? And how do we interpret to what we're, how do we interpret what we're hearing from our bodies? And that's one of the things that I 
definitely specialize in working with people on because everyone's body is different. Right. Some people will do great eating what you just had yesterday and that's what they absolutely need. Yeah. And there's actually clinical reasons for that. So, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to ask you about, which I've mm -hmm. read about and I suspect is true, but um, I'll ask more of the expert side because uh -oh. I've not really researched it per se is, you know, because the other thing you could do, you know, if you're entering next 2023 and you're like, okay, I want to change up something, you know, is even yeah. changing when you eat, you know, so for example, I mean, a lot of people eat late at night, so they get home late, you know, they have that right. big meal because dinner maybe is their main meal and then they go to bed like right after. And I have always read that that's one of the worst things that you can do is like, you know, have this huge meal and then, you know, like within an hour go to bed that you really need like two to three hours for your food to kind of digest in your body um, before going to bed or like that's optimal. Is right. that the case? Yeah, I mean, I truly don't know how anybody on here is able to eat a huge meal and go to sleep. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night if that happens to me and I'm like not my stomach is letting me know, like I feel it all in my food sitting in my stomach still. I do take hydrochloric acid capsules and digestive enzymes, which help, but still like I need, everybody needs a couple hours. I mean, if you logically think about it, you just ate a meal and now you're, you know, to, to, to be laying down and then trying to go to sleep. So let me, let me explain it this way. When we sleep, our body detoxifies. Okay. That's what it does. Some people say, oh, I want to detox. Well, you are every night. Hmm. But if you're eating a huge meal, the body has to digest that. And then very likely it won't be able to go into the detox mode that it needs to go in because it's functioning to digest your food. Yeah. So if you were to eat like three hours before you go to sleep and then most of that food is digested, then, you know, now you'll be able to probably get into these detox levels that the body needs to go through and the brain can rest more, too. Yeah. So it is a real thing. I mean, if you have to eat late, some people watching may say, look, I got to eat late. And I understand that. I just, if you absolutely have to, a couple things I would recommend. One, trying to have smaller meals then, nothing too, too heavy. Something that would be best would be um, foods that are already cooked really well, <laughs> like stews and soups. <laughs> okay, as long as they're not real, real hearty, just you know, <laughs> like more vegetable or maybe a little bit of chicken or beef or something like that that's cooked well. And then um, also, if you can do salads and things like that, that's lighter, you know, um, maybe a piece of cassava flour, tortilla or something like that with the bread and a little bit of chicken, you know, as a bread and then some chicken on it or something. Um, that is another thing you could try and see how you do. But I'm a big fan of hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes when it's necessary. So, again, I, I work with people on that if that's something you want to know. Um, but, and, but and again, check with your doctor before taking those, but that can really help with digestion. So if you are eating an hour before you go to sleep and you throw in a digestive enzyme, it could literally change your whole night if it's affecting you. And either way, it's helpful. Interesting. As long as, I, yeah. I've not heard about that. But. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm telling you, it's changed my life. I was just doing digestive enzymes alone. I was still getting these issues, waking up and then I, I did some testing, this hair testing that I now do, I told you about mm -hmm. the mineral analysis and it said I need HCL, the hydrochloric acid. I'm like, oh, so yeah. I add that to it and it's just a complete different ball game. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, yeah, I just was listening to some book that was talking about how your body detoxifies. And so if you eat like right then, cause I'm always tired after I eat. So like, even if I like mm -hmm. eat and say Jack and I are watching probably, like yeah, an yeah, episode yeah. of something, you know, ultimately I, I may fall asleep just like watching whatever, you know, and then I wake back up right. for a little while and then go to bed later. But, um, <laughs> but that's kind of my, I'm like, poor Jack, <laughs> poor Jack. You're just falling asleep on him. Allison. Yeah. Fine. I know. He makes fun. <laughs> he makes fun of me. He's like, you're just going to fall I'm asleep sure anyway. Does. I'm, <laughs> so, I'm sure he does. Like, yeah. But, but, but here's the truth is that most people don't realize this is that most people after the age of, like when you start getting 30 years old or greater than 30, which we both are, our digestive enzymes that are natural inside of us and usually decrease significantly. So most, I mean, I can say a lot of people at the age of 30 start needing digestive enzymes, mm -hmm. they might just not realize it. And then the hydrochloric acid component could be related as well. Mm -hmm. And that could be related to other things and thyroid and parathyroid and not getting into all that right now. but. 
just know that if you're dealing with a lot of food sitting in your stomach or burping and all that stuff, um, it's very, or you're totally exhausted after you eat, you may need a little help with digesting and processing your foods. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, but that's another option as far as like you could just change your eating habits. So, you know, you, you know. could, but it's still there. If you have a challenge digesting, right. I mean, then you want to address it now because then it means you're probably not absorbing all the nutrients that are in the foods that your body needs. Yeah, good point. So, and you could have more energy and then Jack will have nothing to make fun of you for <laughs> because of yeah. that. So, yeah. Sorry, Jack. Yeah. No, I know <laughs> when I'm on like a stricter regimen than, than I am right this second um, that I do have more energy typically and I'm yeah. eating cleaner and... Even I can tell, you know, because I'm not following it as strictly that I, even if I have the three hours to sleep or to uh, digest food before I go to bed, um, you know, I still haven't slept because I track sleep on this Apple Watch and I still haven't, mm -hmm. you know, my sleep still hasn't been as good. Now I'm exercising a little bit less. So even though I'm walking every day or at least five days a week, um, I'm not doing the second exercise. So when I did 75 hard, it was, you know, the two 45 minute regiments a day. So sometimes it'd be two walks, sometimes it'd be walk and gym. So I found when I did that, that helped a lot too. like maintain, yeah. you know, like helped with sleep because I know the more I exercise, the better I sleep typically as well. So absolutely. And exercise can help with digesting food. I mean, it just gets everything moving and flowing, but ultimately if you don't have those enzymes and you don't have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, it's just, it, yeah. Do, do some research on it. We could talk more about it next time or call me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I have to look that up. because uh, It'd be interesting to do a hair test on you just to see if you need, because it'll show if you need the hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes. I personally take both, but hmm. that's just what makes me feel the best. Right. Right. Anyways, <laughs> so it, yeah, it's it's interesting how everyone's body is so different, and some people they they just need to have a big meal before bed, and they can sleep through the night, and they're fine. And then there's you know everyone's just so different. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And I think you know the one of the things that you know I do as an entrepreneur, you know, going off the health side for a minute, you know, is I really start looking in the third the third quarter, fourth quarter that we're in right now. Um, you know, looking at 2023 and what I'm looking to accomplish, but I'm also looking at the bigger pictures. I'm looking from a, you know, not only a business side, but a personal side, a health side, you know, all that um, kind of goes into the big picture for me. And uh, so I'm setting goals on all of those items as opposed to yeah. just the business. And I think that's something else that, um, you know, if you own a business or you are getting ready to start a business, you know, to look at is, you know, when you own a business, so it has to fit into the bigger picture because a lot of times you're going to spend a lot more time at your business than maybe you did at the previous job, depending on what you did. You know, if you just had that nine to five hourly job, then more than likely, you know, you were working 35, 40 hours a week and you could leave your work at the office. You could, you know, just get up and go in nine to five or whatever, 10 to six or whatever it was. And you know, and then you're stress free at night, you know, and when you own a business, sometimes that's not the case. <laughs> so, um, so I think that's the other thing is, you know, looking at 2023 in general, you know, as opposed to like, oh, it's a new year's resolution. Let me figure out what I'm going to do starting January 1st. So obviously I'm looking at the bigger picture of all of 2023 and what I'm looking to accomplish versus just, you know, January 1st. Cause I think that's another, challenge I see, and I've done New Year's resolutions too. Yeah. So um, challenge I see in the New Year's resolution thing, because it's not, you're not looking at the bigger, greater plan of like, okay, I really want to change my health for 2023. And then obviously, like you said earlier, you know, what's the reasoning, but the bigger picture, or the re bigger reason behind it. Um, and looking at it that way. So for me, it's like, I want to optimize, you know, be optimal in the business. I want to be able to operate at the highest yeah. level I can. And for me, that takes energy, that takes focus, that takes, you know, dedication. And so that's why like my health is very important and how I eat is very important because I want to feel my best when I am working. 
you know, and so that's part of my bit bigger reason, I guess. And I love that. I love that. And I think ultimately what it comes down to is it comes down to sacrifice. It comes down to being willing to sacrifice the things that make us comfortable, the things that, um, you know, we like eating or the things that we may like doing or ways that we're spending our time or money, whatever it is, sacrificing certain things to be able to reach our goals. And right. that's the reality. Like when it comes to food, you, it, what, what I've learned is it, it, it comes down to releasing all attachments to food. <laughs> And it's, it's a process, mm -hmm. but I mean, I, I truly am not attached to any foods. It's been years. Wow. I don't know the last time I was. So if somebody says, you can't eat this, it's like, okay, I can't eat this because I'm that committed right. to my health and my vision for my life and helping a lot of people, right? So, so it's really just, it's being able to humbly and realistically kind of release the um, blinders from our eyes and say, okay, the reality is... For me to have these things that I want for myself in my career, personal life, contribution to the world, relationships, whatever. This is what this is what I need from myself. I can't control everything, no. but the things <laughs> I can control, let me at least try and say, hey, I did the best I could. And that's really what it comes down to. But it's being willing to sacrifice what we need to sacrifice to be able to get what we really want. Right. And we're doing that anyways as entrepreneurs. I mean, we're doing that all the time and sacrificing whether it's our time or or going out with if work comes up or whatever it is. So it's just on another level. And that's the reality. Yeah, it's the reality. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I mean, the last podcast I released, which um, was this week, I actually filmed it myself. And I mean, it was just on getting started. And it was really talking about, you know, either starting a business or growing a business. But you know, it's the same thing in anything you do. And I talked about that even in the podcast is, you know, it's whether you're looking to get healthier, you're looking to grow your business, you're looking to start a business, you're, you know, whatever it is you're looking to do, you know, you're looking to find that perfect spouse, you know, I mean, there are ways to, you know, you're not going to control that, but there are certainly steps that you can do to get yourself out there more. Um, you know, some people aren't into the dating apps, but I mean, there's other ways to meet people too. So, um, you know, I think that's, it's really getting started. And so it's whatever. And that's why, like, for me, like, it's also looking at that big picture of like, what are the goals? What are the, you know, the next steps for me? And, yeah. you know, having that first, you know, f you know, right in the front. And that way, everything, you know, all the decisions, like you said earlier, like, you know, you're not attached to food. And so if someone said you can't eat that, you're like, okay. You know, it's the same thing as, you know, if your goal is this, you know, you're you're trying to lose 25 pounds because, you know, you want to be healthier for your children and grandchildren and, yeah. you know, walk your daughter down the aisle or walk your son down the aisle, you know, whatever it is, you know, then that's your why. And, you know, it should be easy to, you know, I shouldn't say it's easy because probably not, it's not easy <laughs> all the time. So, but you have to like, always think outward and like, look at, you know, what the bigger picture is. So it's not like, Oh my God, that piece of cheesecake looks amazing right there. And I really want that piece of cheesecake and Oh, that would taste so good. And like, that's what, you know, your, your brain's going to is like, remember how that tasted the last time you had a piece of cheesecake, <laughs> you know, um, you know, instead of saying, no, I'm good. Right. We fall into, so it's making decisions instead of out of emotions, it's making decisions out of commitments. Oh, so when I just lay on this point, you've got a path. It's a fork in the road. No pun intended with fork <laughs> there. But it is. You either make decisions out of your emotions or out of your commitments. And I want to just say, because I know we talked about this before uh, when I was on, that the vision in the world of wellness coaching, what Allison's talking about is a vision, creating her vision for the year. And that's like if you look at a map, that's your destination. And then the roads to get to that destination are the individual goals. So, okay, stopping sugar, going to the gym five days a week, 20 minutes a day, whatever it is, going to sleep at 10 o'clock, spending time in relaxation, meditation, prayer, whatever it is for you. Okay. But that's, but Allison's right. I mean, you absolutely have to be clear on a vision. Remember, every company has a vision. Yep. They have a vision. They know where they're headed. They know why they opened up the business. It's the same thing with your life. If you don't have a vision, then guess what? Your compass is going to be spinning and then temptation and emotions 
just emotional decisions are much easier than when you've got the clarity that Allison's talking about. Right. So it's super, super important. And you can hear I'm very passionate about this because a lot of people don't know this. And I've learned it myself. It's like, wow, once I get really clear on what I want, anything else, clear it away until I, you know, unless it's really on my path. So, and the other point I want to make very briefly about that was once we make up our mind, I'll tell you what, if we make decisions out of emotions, what happens, Allison? If you make decisions. How do we feel? If I said, hey, I'm not going to be doing this and then I do it anyways, how do I feel oh, most likely? Usually bad about the decision. You blame yourself. Right. Like, why couldn't you be stronger? Right. And then what do people do? They feel bad that they're feeling bad and they want to numb it out. So now it's another piece of cheesecake. But they already had, you know what, they already had cheesecake today. So let's do McDonald's because yeah. I've already lost, you know, I've already, already blown like, it. messed up. <laughs> right. And then to, right. And then tomorrow, you know what, this week, let's just wait till next year. That's the human mind. It really is taking the reins and taking the control back and saying, I'm starting now. You don't have to wait till January. First. Yeah. In fact, I encourage anybody that's watching this to do this before. Is this going to air before January 1st? Yeah. Okay, so anybody that's watching this, start now. Don't wait till January 1st. You can still do it during the holidays. You can still have a little bit of, you know, treats and enjoy a little treats here, you know, some little treats here and there. But just get clear on your commitments, get clear on your vision. Right. There you go. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, Jack and I always go back and forth on that because he'll be like, yeah, I'm going to start Monday. And then, you know, he'll be good for like a day right. or two. And then like, I'm like, what happened well, to the starting Monday? Monday? And he's like, I'll start next month. <laughs> I'm like, uh, right, it's Monday or the first of the month or the first of the year. It's like, that's the most people say. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, oh. and that's just the way to keep putting it off. Unless right. there's something real that really is, there's a reason for it. I mean, I do respect there could be certain things that are like valid reasons. Right. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, it's hard, you know, and I think the other thing is, and, um, you know, during this time, especially if you're going to start prior to the holiday, the Christmas and Hanukkah holidays and other holidays, Kwanzaa's in there. Um, you know, if you're going to start now in December, you know, a lot of times you may be on one path, but other people in your house may be on a different path. And so they may be yeah. eating the sugar and eating the other things. Right. And so one of the challenges, you know, I know we have, is you know we have sabrina jack's um daughter in our house and, and the boyfriend and you know they cook much differently than i might cook or eat much differently you know and i still eat some of the food but you know they'll eat the big pasta dinner all the time and whereas i may eat pasta but i'm going to go to the gluten-free pasta if i make it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know and i may make it with some you know olive oil and shrimp versus you know and i may have some ground beef every once in a while but um you know and that's where we differ a little bit in the food and so it's a lot of the stuff they make is heavy carb and i and i definitely like carbs <laughs> i like carbs right. and i love rice um everybody most people yeah do. <laughs> but you know i mean ultimately carbs break down to the sugar side again so yeah. um you know so that's the other challenge is you really do have to be definite in your purpose and what you want in order to say, no, I'm good and not be like, oh, I could just like have that one little bite, you know, <laughs> as soon as you have one little yeah, bite, like you go down that rabbit hole, I find and it's like, oh, right. forget it. <laughs> well, because of what, let's just circle back to the beginning. We talked about sugar and how the body responds. Right. So once you put the sugar in, it's tough. The sugar kind of can affect the brain significantly. But I want to just say, I know I said this in one of our previous episodes too, but um, I really want to encourage everybody to please put a support system in place for yourself during the holidays, as well as with your vision, your goals for the new year. So if that means talking with your spouse or your family or your friends and saying, hey, just don't put the cake in my face, enjoy it, but don't put it in my face. Please don't offer it to me. And again, if people say, well, why you, you know, you look great. You don't need to eat healthy. Just <laughs> don't go there because they'll just try to, sometimes people will just try to manipulate you and just like convince you that you can eat this unhealthy food that you already decided you weren't eating. Right. So it's just, Hey, no, thank you. Like, thanks so much, but no, thank you. Why not? Because I'm choosing not to eat it. Well, why not? Because I'm choosing not to yep. eat it, but you could, but I'm choosing not to eat it. It's just kind of going back to that, those boundaries and just setting up the support system. If you're going to holiday parties, Ask whoever you're going with. If you're going with somebody, hey, you know, you see me grabbing a second piece of chocolate cake, give me a little nudge. 
whatever the scenario is, whatever you feel you need. Right. So come up with your vision, come up with your goals, and then ask yourself, what support do I need to put in place to make this happen within myself and outside of me? And again, I'm here if anybody wants additional support from a coach. Okay. No, that's, that's great information. Okay. And I think, yeah, going into 2023 is, you know, it's really important if you don't get to this, you know, listen to this before the end of the year, um, you know, really important to kind of focus in on what you want your 2023 to look like from, you know, professional standpoint, health standpoint, personal, do you want to travel? Like what, you know, what loved ones you want to spend time with, things like that, and really be intentional about making that happen. And I think that's a really important For thing sure. because, you know, if you, if you're not intentional about something, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Um, Correct. Correct. So, and just to that note, um, just, yeah, I mean, just have fun with it, you know, try to have fun with it. And if you watch this video in March of 2023, you didn't just blow the year. Okay. <laughs> start now in March of 2023. Don't let that voice convince you. If you start in December of 2023, start then like whatever it is, just get it going. Cause if it's something that's in your heart and you think about it a lot, then it's, it will, you will feel so much better once it's cleared from here and you're actually in action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, just start is awesome. an awesome, awesome moniker. Just start, start. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions for you, um, what's the best way to reach you? Universalcoachingservices.com is my website. Okay, great. Thank you very much again today, Elisa, you, for joining us on the Dream Plan Start Grow show. Today we talked about health and how the impact of health, obviously, you know, and positive health can help your business and help you be more efficient in growing your business as well. And we also talked a little bit about 2023 and really setting a big vision, not only from a business side, but a personal side, a health side. Um, so you know exactly what you want in 2023. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Dream Plan Start Grow podcast with Allison Turner. If you like what you heard, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Join the Dream Plan Start Grow community by following us on Facebook or Instagram at Dream Plan Start Grow. See you in the next episode.